Here's an old video from the vault. I hope you enjoy. Greetings, the Astro 30 here. Today I went to the tip shop like I often do and managed to find one of these old Philips FM828 transceivers. And these were capable of 10 channels. These were quite common and popular back in the late 1990s. At the back here we've got a very large power amplifier heat sink for the transmitter. Got the microphone in socket there. The power on the left, uh, which looking at the schematic, the one with the triangle on top is actually the earth, and the one at the bottom is the positive. Now hang on a minute. It's actually the other way around. The way I'm about to do it is in reverse polarity. Now luckily, the device has some form of wrong way protection, so it doesn't allow the unit to work but won't fry it in the process but that's not the point. The easiest way to find where the earth is is to stick a multimeter probe on one of the pins of the connector and then touch it to an earth point such as the antenna's B and C socket. Once you get continuity between those two points you'll know that that is actually the negative or the ground pin. Anyway just thought I'd share that information before someone points it out in the comments. Back to the video. And then there's a little auxiliary audio input channel there too. And a BNC type, I think they're 50 ohm. Not 100% sure, I can't remember offhand. Uh, antenna connection. Now, it cost $11. I mean, there was no way of testing it because these things aren't used anymore. Managed to find a microphone with the correct plug on it that fits this transceiver. The only thing with it is... Um, yeah, the Cables, awfully dodgy there. But together, I paid $15 for the lot. The first part of this video is I'm gonna be trying to hook it up to a car battery in this case because I don't have a 13.8 volts power supply that's suitable for communications. See if it works. Um, and then the second part of the video, I'll actually take the casing off and we'll take a good look at the insides of it. Just a quick look at the front here. You've got a volume control the AUX on off switch. That I believe is transmit and that one's receive or it could be the other way around. It's been a long time since I've used one of these transceivers. The power button there and the squelch or muting control and of course the channel selector. But I will state that if you don't know what frequency a transceiver is operating on, do not connect it to an antenna and if you're going to connect it to an antenna, don't start transmitting on that frequency because in some countries it is illegal to transmit on any other frequency but the citizen's band frequency or CB frequency. And any other frequency you need a amateur radio license or ham radio license in order to transmit on those frequencies, especially the two meter and the six meter bands. And without the correct license you can be in for a huge fine so that's just a word of warning so don't just go ahead and start transmitting on these things connected up to an antenna unless you know what frequency it's operating on and you have the appropriate license so i guess that's enough me talking about the thing i'm going to now take this outside to the car and hook it up to a car battery and see if i can get it to power on and make some noises all right i've got the microphone hooked in and rather crude looking arrangement here which I don't think is going to work so I'm going to have to find another way of getting that connector to work. Hmm, that works. Just used a bit of welding rod to shove in the connector there. Anyway, let's hook it up to the car battery and see what it does. Not a bad day out here. Hmm. Okay, this is my setup. I've got uh, a board sitting across the engine bay of my car. Battery's here. Well, the thing appears to be dead. Alright, so let's open it up and have a look. 
Well, there doesn't appear to be any screws holding it together, but how I think this comes apart is these unclip. And then you can just lift the lid off. Wow, isn't that exciting? And there's the underside of it. Uh, yeah, there's an awful lot of cut wiring in this. So just the ends of wire here not going to anywhere. So that could be the very reason why it doesn't work. Um, it looks like it's actually missing a circuit board, maybe. Not 100% sure on that, but um, yeah, it's uh, not complete. All right, so this is about as useful as tits on a ball. There's a good look at the underside of the board on top. And that looks like the crystal oscillator section for, I think it's the receiver side. And this looks like all receiver circuitry here. Uh, yeah, it's really quite interesting. I still don't know where any of those wires go or come from, but yeah, someone's really gone in here and messed it up. And this is the underside lower board, and again with the crystal oscillator here, but all the crystals are missing. So even if I had been able to get power to this, um, it doesn't have any of its crystals in there, and crystals are extremely expensive these days. And without really knowing much about this particular design, uh, I don't even know what crystals suit it. So, yeah, this looks like the transmitter section. It's really quite interesting. Hmm. They're just on a little hinge here, and you just remove two screws and it hinges up for you. Uh, yeah, well, that's all I can say about that particular part of the thing. Also, on the underside is the audio power amplifier and power supply section. I believe that's what it's for. There's a little output I see there. It's a TDA2002. I believe it's about a 1 watt power amplifier. And from the top down, we can see part of a circuit board disappearing up into the heatsink area, which is the actual main transmitter's power amplifier. And all the interesting stuff would be under this panel. So let's remove it. So with the screws removed, there we go. That's uh, what the power amplifier looks like for the transmitter. It's all very interesting to a point. And that's one of the main power transistors. It's quite an interesting looking thing, isn't it? I'm not sure what that blue thing that says MHW710-2. Um, it's a Motorola device, but it may be a power amplifier module itself. And this might be slightly different to the schematic I've actually got. So, yeah, I'm taking this apart as I go and putting it back together again because I don't really want bits of it all over the place. And for those of you wondering, there's the speaker that it uses. It's a Japanese 3 ohm speaker, which is kind of an odd resistance. Um, made by Hohu Tone. Mm. These were really designed to be mounted into a vehicle. Other than that, that's all I can really show you about this. I can't show it working or doing anything because A, half the wiring has been cut. Well, not half the wiring. But things like this type of wire here, which I believe is for the antenna uh, going to the receiver side and the, from the transmitter side. So the antenna's being cut. Judging by this sticky stuff here, it looked like something was actually stuck here like another circuit board. Uh, there's a little hole here which looks threaded to me and a couple up there that another board was secured to it and um, which is where all this wiring tends to land is right around this double-sided tape section. So there is a board actually missing out of this so it'll in its current state never work again. But anyway I hope you found something interesting about this uh, Philips FM828 transceiver, or at least what the insides look like. Shame I couldn't get it working, but yeah, uh, what do you expect? Anyway, I'm the Astro 30. Thanks for watching. <laughs>